Numerical Computation, Chapter 11, Video 1. In this method, we introduce and learn finite difference methods to solve um, some partial differential equations, actually two types of partial differential equations. These are typically second-order linear partial differential equations, and they are of particular importance because of the wild application into physical models. So these equations include Laplace equation in two-dimensional space and Poisson equation in two-dimensional space. So um, this type of equations are called elliptic type. Okay? And we will study Dirichlet and or Neumann boundary conditions. We will also look at a second type which is called a parabolic type of partial differential equation in one space dimension, and this is time dependent. So a typical example is the famous heat equation, and we will check it with various boundary conditions as well. Okay, so let's get started. Let's consider a Laplace equation in two-dimensional space. The equation takes this form u sub xx plus u sub yy equals to zero. Here the sub x denotes the partial derivative with respect to x. So u xx simply means partial square of u over partial x square twice. Okay, and then the same meaning is for this partial derivative. And we consider a unit square for x lies between 0 and 1 and for y lies between 0 and 1. We consider Dirichlet boundary condition and Dirichlet condition means the unknown, the value of my unknown u here is already given on the boundary. So if the condition is 0 we call it homogeneous otherwise we call it non-homogeneous. So we'll consider the Dirichlet boundary condition with the homogeneous condition on three sides, meaning non-homogeneous only on one. So you see it's zero on one side, on the other, and on the third, and it is non-zero and equals to some function of g only on one side. So here is a um, graphic illustration of the boundary conditions. So you know it's 0 on this side, and that side is when x is 0, and y varies from 0 to 1. And it's 0 here when x equals to 1, and y varies from 0 to 1. And it's also on 0 down below, where y is 0 and x varies between 0 and 1. And the only side where the boundary condition is non-zero is this one here, when y equals to 1 and x varies from 0 to 1. And let's denote this condition by some function g, g of x. We now set up a uniform grid in both x and y directions. So fix a positive integer capital N, which is the number of intervals in both x and y directions. And we let h to be the distance between two grid points, so it's 1 over n and then xi, the grid value for x in the x direction, would simply becomes i times h, and yj will be j times h, and here i and j are two indices, and each of them runs from 0 to capital N. So this value h here is often referred to as the grid size. So our goal is to find some discrete approximate solution to the um, exact solution, and we will only find the approximation at the grid point. That is, um, we will find values u with double index ij, which will be an approximation to the exact solution at xi, yj, so a particular grid point in the domain. So for the two um, partial derivatives, namely two on um, second order partial derivatives at a grid point x i y j we can approximate it using central finite difference 
say for example for u sub xx we would simply treat yj as a constant and just vary the index for x so this is what we will get the u at x at i minus 1 minus 2u at xi and plus u at xi plus 1 divided by h square which is the delta x square and one can do the same thing for the second partial derivative in y fixing xi as a constant here so you see i is the same for these three values and what's changing is the index for y which is j here the same central final difference so we know both of these are second order approximations we can now plug these two approximation back into the Laplace equation and uh, we get the following so what I did is simply put this guy over here and put this guy over here and add them up and set them to be zero one could um, now um, multiply both sides by h squared to get rid of the denominator and combine these two terms together and write it in a kind of a cleaner way okay so after some simplification cleaning up we get the following this equals to zero that's actually zero times h squared okay and in front of uij i get negative four and in front of all the other um, unknown value at the other grid points i get one so this is called um, the discrete laplace equation and we see that this one holds at every grid point x i y j which is not on the boundary because if it's on the boundary you see if i j is on the boundary then you would need some number um, outside the domain so you can't do that okay so i would run from 1 to n minus 1 and so would j so in the end um, this gives us n minus 1 times n minus 1 equations now let's set in the boundary conditions into the discrete um, data so the discrete boundary conditions are the values all around the boundaries so at the two boundary where um x equals to zero that's the index i equals to zero and u will be zero for all j and at x equal to one that's where i equals to capital n and then u is zero for all j and then when y equals to zero that means j equal to zero and u will be zero for all i and then the last side when y equals to one when j equals to capital n my um, boundary condition is none homogeneous so it equals to the value g if uh, the function g evaluated at the point x i so we can just call this g i we see that um each discrete laplace equation involves five grid points and if we um draw them out in in their corresponding position in the grid we get something that's referred to as a um, computational stencil so the one in the middle here that's the one with the index i j this unknown is multiplied by negative four and then you need one on the left and you need one on the right in the x direction and they are multiplied by one and then you need one below and the one above in the y direction and these are multiplied by one so this computational stencil actually um, can be very useful when we um, want to set up the equations if we want to set up all equations in through the whole domain the computational stencil can be very useful we'll see that okay so we also notice that only the interior points will be the unknowns because on the boundary the u is given so this gives us um, n minus one square unknowns and this matches the number of the equations so if it's well defined we shall be able to solve it and get a unique solution we also um, remark that each equation here is actually a linear equation for the unknown and then we have n minus one square linear equations which from experience we know we can always write it as a system of linear equations into um, matrix and vector form 
So that will be the topic of the next video. Hope you enjoyed it and see you then.